A dictatorship is a form of government in which a single individual or a small group of people holds absolute and centralized authority, typically without the consent of the governed. In dictatorships, leaders, often referred to as dictators, wield unchecked power, suppress political opposition and dissent, and frequently face international criticism. Here are some examples of leaders from dictatorship countries. Kim Jong-un, the current leader of North Korea, he has been in power since 2011 and has implemented authoritarian rule. North Korea is internationally isolated and known for human rights issues and nuclear weapon development. Bashar al-Assad, the president of Syria since 2000, he has maintained authoritarian rule during the Syrian civil war and faced international condemnation. Vladimir Putin, the president of Russia since 1999, he has held various political roles and implemented authoritarian rule, leading to international controversies. Robert Mugabe, the former president of Zimbabwe, ruled for a long time, known for authoritarianism and human rights abuses. His rule ended in 2017. Mohammed bin Salman, the crown prince of Saudi Arabia, he plays a powerful role in domestic politics and enforces authoritarian rule. However, he is a prominent figure on the international stage. Hafez al-Assad, the father of Bashar al-Assad, he was the president of Syria from 1970 to 2000 and known for authoritarian rule and human rights abuses. Alexander Lukashenko, the president of Belarus since 1994, he maintains authoritarian rule within Belarus and faces international criticism. Recep Tayyip Erdogan, the president of Turkey since 2014, he has continued to consolidate power domestically. Nicolás Maduro, the president of Venezuela since 2013, he has caused economic collapse and political instability in Venezuela. Each of these leaders faces various international issues and controversies, which can lead to diverse problems both domestically and internationally. A country that succeeded in dictatorship, South Korea. President Park Chung-hee, despite his dictatorial rule, made significant contributions to South Korea's economic development during his time in power, which lasted from May 16, 1961 through October 26, 1979. Economic Reforms and Export Promotion President Park Chung-hee prioritized national development through economic growth as his main goal. He considered industrialization and promoting exports as crucial policies, leading to rapid economic growth in South Korea. To boost exports, he implemented export support policies and attracted foreign investments, especially by fostering growth and improving technology in the manufacturing sector. South Korea secured competitiveness in the international market. One industry-driven industrialization. To promote South Korea's industrialization, President Park Chung-hee implemented a policy known as One Industry-Driven Industrialization. This policy involved selecting key industries and providing concentrated support to achieve economic growth. Notably, industries such as textiles, steel, and petrochemicals were developed, and South Korea's economy thrived around these key sectors. Improving the Investment Environment President Park Chung-hee undertook legal and institutional reforms to enhance the investment environment. His administration pursued measures to attract foreign investments and support domestic businesses, ultimately improving the economic environment. Advancements in Technology and Infrastructure During President Park Chung-hee's time, South Korea promoted advancements in science and technology, as well as infrastructure development. With a highly educated workforce and in innovative research and development, South Korea gained international recognition in the field of technology. Building highways after visiting Germany After President Park Chung-hee's visit to Germany, there was significant attention on events related to the construction of highways in South Korea. In the mid-1970s, in support of South Korea's economic growth and modernization, President Park Chung-hee decided to model South Korea's highway system after Germany's and initiated highway construction projects in the country. This led to several important developments. Opening of the Han River Bridge, Hanam Bridge, in the mid-1970s, the prominent bridge spanning the Han River, known as the Han River Bridge, nowadays Hanam Bridge, was opened. This marked the beginning of highway construction in South Korea. Development of National Route, Yongdong Expressway From the late 1970s to the early 1980s, the construction of National Route, also known as the Yongdong Expressway, took place. This highway connected Seoul and Daegu, 
significantly improving South Korea's transportation infrastructure and promoting domestic economic activities. Relocation of Seoul International Airport, Kimpo Airport. President Park Chung-hee initiated a project to expand Kimpo Airport into South Korea's international airport. This contributed to South Korea becoming more connected internationally and contributing to economic development. Economic growth based on highways. President Park Chung-hee's highway construction projects spurred economic growth in South Korea. The improvement of logistics and transportation infrastructure had a positive impact on the industrial sector enhancing South Korea's competitiveness in both domestic and international markets. These highway development projects are widely regarded as significant contributions to South Korea's territorial development and transportation infrastructure innovation. The highway construction initiated during President Park Chung-hee's era continues to have a lasting impact on South Korea's transportation system and economic structure. President Park Chung-hee's trip to borrow money. President Park Chung-hee's trip abroad to borrow money is related to the economic crisis in South Korea in the 1970s. South Korea was facing economic difficulties at the time and attempted to secure funds from overseas to stabilize the economy. As part of these efforts, President Park Chung-hee visited several countries to borrow money. One of the most notable cases is related to the energy crisis that occurred in 1973. During this time, there was a global energy crisis, leading to a sharp increase in oil prices, which had a significant impact on South Korea's economy. In response, President Park Chung-hee visited countries such as Japan and the United States to request financial assistance. As a result, South Korea successfully secured funds to overcome the economic crisis. Furthermore, President Park Chung-hee visited Germany and conducted negotiations with the German government, successfully borrowing money. These funds contributed to South Korea's economic development and the construction of highways, among other projects. By securing foreign funds, South Korea achieved economic stability, and during President Park Chung-hee's tenure, the country experienced steady economic growth. These episodes of borrowing money from abroad played a significant role in President Park Chung-hee's economic policies and South Korea's economic development. An anecdote involving President Park Chung-hee and Chairman Chung Ju Young of Hyundai. One summer day in 1975, President Park Chung-hee urgently summoned Hyundai Construction's Chairman Chung Ju Young to the Blue House. Here's a great opportunity to earn dollars, but some people are saying they can't do the job. Go to the Middle East right away. If you Chairman Chung can't do it either, I'll give up too. Chairman Chung asked, what are you talking about? In 1973, Due to the oil crisis, Middle Eastern countries can't control their dollars. They want to build various social infrastructure with that money, but there's no country willing to work in such a hot place. I sent representatives, but after just two weeks, they came back saying it's too hot to work during the day, and there's no water, which is essential for construction. They say it's a country where they can't work. All right, I'll leave today. Chairman Chung Ju Young returned to the Blue House after just five days and met President Park Chung Hee again. It seems like heaven is helping our country, as they say, if you have virtue, heaven will help. President Park replied, what are you talking about? The Middle East is the best place in the world for construction. What do you mean? There's no rain for 12 months, so construction can go on all year round, your excellency. What else? We have the necessary sand and gravel on site, so material procurement is easy, Your Excellency. What about water? We can bring it from somewhere, Your Excellency. What about the scorching heat of 50 degrees? We can set up tents, sleep during the day, and work at night, Your Excellency. President Park pressed the bell and called in his chief secretary. Chief, for Hyundai Construction's venture in the Middle East, the government should provide all possible support. As Chairman Chung Ju Young said, Korean workers slept during the day and worked with torches at night. The world was astonished. At a time when the dollar was scarce, 300,000 workers flocked to the Middle East and came in on a Boeing 747 flight. President Park Chung Hee was a president who dedicated himself to the welfare of the poor and hungry citizens, making him a president rarely seen in the world. Citizens in many countries like Venezuela and Turkey suffer from hunger and poverty due to numerous dictatorships. South Korean citizens should be grateful to President Park Chung-hee, 
It is a basic etiquette that people should possess.